Good morning Year 9, um, this is Mrs Shelton, some of you might not know me, I teach uh, two Year 9 business classes and we are going to be doing ownership and liability and this is lesson 1 of 5. So first of all we're going to look over what we did last time we were in actually in school, I don't know if you can remember that, quite a long time ago now. Um, we are going to look at break even. Can you remember what is a fixed cost? What is a variable cost? What costs always stay the same? What does break even mean? And what is the definition of profit? You can look in your um, textbook which has been on Show My Homework. There's also some revision resources from Murphy's. Um, if you haven't got it, Show My Homework, it is also, you should have a textbook as well. So have a look in there, um, see if you can remember and um, take a minute or so to write down the answers. So these are the answers for the um, break even recall knowledge quiz. So what is a fixed cost? It's costs that don't change just because your sales or output changes, for example, rent um, and machinery. Um, what is a variable cost? Costs that vary change when your sales or output change, such as raw materials. For example, if you're going to make loads um, lots of orders for new t-shirts going to need lots of cotton material so you will order more for that month than you normally would. Uh, what costs always stay the same? They're your fixed costs. What does break even mean? The point when the business is making neither a profit nor a loss. And what is the definition of profit? It is revenue, takeaway, total cost. So today's lesson is about ownership and liability. So the lesson objectives for today are to understand limited liability, to understand unlimited liability and what the difference is and how it can affect the business and the owner. So there are some words that we're going to need for the lesson today that you might not have heard of before. So first one is ownership, um, you probably know that one, um, first having possession of something. Um, so you are in ownership of a um, oyster card, that's an example. Liability, you might have heard that word before, that is being legally responsible for any debt or financial commitment of a business. And there's lots in the news in the moment, isn't there, about shops um, going bankrupt and who has the liability for the debt. So the next word we're going to go on to is bankrupt. When an individual is unable to pay their debt, even after they sold their personal items. Next one, unlimited liability. This is treating the business and the individual owner as inseparable therefore making the individual responsible for all the debts of a failed business. And last one is limited liability, which restricts the losses suffered by the owner or shareholder to the sum they invested in the business. So these words are going to come up, and what I've tried to do um, is highlight them in the same colour throughout the PowerPoint as um, on here. So this blue colour, if you look out for that, Go back if you don't understand what the word is and it will come up on here for you. So what I would like you to do now is think about what happens when a company goes bankrupt. Um, can you think about that? Give it a moment and think about that now.
There are some hints here for you. So what does a company own? How does an accountant help out, do you think? And is there any debt or cash in the business? So what happens when a company goes bankrupt? Um, I hope you've written some notes in your workbook, but these are the actual things that happen. So the owner or shareholders um, do not have to pay the firm's debt if there's still money owed because they have limited liability, if that's if they are a uh, private limited company. Um, so that will mean that they will only lose the money that they put in in the first place. So for instance, if someone started a new business and they um, put in £10,000 and they asked their friends to put in £10,000 each, so maybe two or three friends, they only will lose that money, that £10,000 they each put in. But even if the company owes £100,000, they will only be liable, that's the word, for the £10,000. Um, but if the company has unlimited unli liability, it means that the business owner will be liable for all the debt. So he's put in £10,000. If he had limited liability, that's all he would have to pay back. But if he has unlimited unli liability, it will mean that he will have to pay the whole thing back, all the money. Um, so that could mean that he could lose his car, his home, lots of things. Okay, but we will look at that in more detail. Um, so as I said, the business owner could lose all their personal possessions, like their car and their house, to pay off the business debt. However, um, there is an accountant, an independent accountant, will help out and try and raise as much cash as possible to repay the firm's debt. So that was our starter for today. Um, we're just going to go now on to um, key point of limited liability. This is all new knowledge for you. You won't have known this before. So, um, to achieve limited liability, a business must start up a company. Um, so, an application to company's house, and it actually only costs £150. Um, to do this and then you can have limited after your business name. So it's £150, well worth it um, and you'll see why what later. So these businesses have private limited status now. All right. So we're going to actually discuss that more in lesson four but just to let you know now. Okay, and underneath the PowerPoint you can see how you actually form a company. So, uh, limited liability, and uh, here's some new knowledge again for you. Um, the companies on the right do have limited liability, Iceland, River Island and DFS. So what are the advantages? A company can have share capital, which makes it easy to divide the ownership up. The company founder should keep hold of 51% of the shares so that they have control. If they lose that 51%, they won't have overall control of the company. That's really important. It makes it much more difficult to make decisions. It's easier to raise more capital and money. And the bank, banks like a limited company. Uh, the company continues to exist even if the founder dies. And the company can take a few risks to expand because it means that the um, owners or shareholders will not be liable to pay the debt if it goes wrong. Um, it is important to note that um, it's really easy to turn into a limited liability company, but lots of businesses do not bother, and that's when um, they can start losing their house, their cars, um, everything like that, if they don't turn themselves into a limited liability company. Um, 
The only other thing as well is to note that if you are a limited company, you do have to have accounts and they are published um, and it costs about £1,500 every year to do that. So, um, key points on unlimited liability. Um, quite easy to do, you just need to tell Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs um, that, so that's the HMRC if you've heard of that, and you just need to set up a bank account. Um, but just to let you know, the business and the person are one, so their tax and legal purposes also are one, which leaves the entrepreneur liable for any debt which I've said to you before today. A company should not ignore limited liability unless there's no realistic possibility of debt building up. Maybe an example is, um, an example might be a market stall trader um, who literally buys the stuff in the morning, sells it in the afternoon, probably won't have much debt um, or, or be in debt. But that's a very fast moving business, that's a very rare um, type of business to be in. Um, a sole trader runs their business without forming a company and we will study that more next lesson and we will discuss why sole traders can do that. Um, so today you have got um, your main activity which is in the workbook. Um, so what I want you to do is um, the main activity is actually a news article um, from June from sorry, January 2019, um, and it's a bit of a comprehension there. And then at the end of that, once you've answered those questions and all the answers are in the text in the newspaper article, after that is a final activity where it's a question, um, and it would be worth about three marks in a GCSE question. Have a go at it. Um, from all the knowledge that you've just learned today, you can do it. So have a look at that and see how you go. Alright, well that's our lesson over today, so I um, hope you enjoyed the PowerPoint and um, it's now for you to complete the workbook. Thank you.